In a previous video, we discussed Dr. Robert Caldini's Six Principles of Influence. Now, one of those key principles is the principle of scarcity. In this video, we're going to show you how to use the principle of scarcity to help raise the value of your personal brand and increase your credibility. By doing this, you'll be much more able to exercise influence and ethically persuade others. Now, the principle of scarcity states that the more scarce a resource is, the more it'll be highly valued. It's effectively the same as the law of supply and demand in economics, except that refers to the available goods supply versus the price. For our purposes, you are the resource, so we're going to be making you more valuable. So to increase the, your value of your personal brand, you're going to have to do a few things. We're going to describe them in depth in this video. But one thing is you have to have ethics that are beyond reproach. In this manner, when you make a suggestion or a recommendation, people are going to trust you, they're going to believe you, and they're going to be very likely to listen. So the three ways we're going to show you how to use scarcity is one, specialization, two, leverage your differences, and three, integrity. The first thing we're going to discuss is to raise your value by specializing something. Now this should be something that's very important to your company. And ideally it's something fairly complicated and even better, it should be something that very few people understand. Now study this, learn this, master this. And when you think you know it, learn it some more. I'll give you a personal example and then we'll talk about how to do this. Personally, about 20 years ago, I became an expert on IP multicast. Realistically speaking, I was one of a handful of people in the entire world that could truly understand and implement IP multicast. Now, what I did is I wrote a paper on introduction to multicast. Now, what I did that was different than most people is I wrote it in human terms, something that regular engineers could understand, something that managers could understand, and something that executives can understand because there were three versions of my paper. And I made sure it was very comprehensive. I made sure it had good graphics and I made sure it was better than anything else that I could find out there. Now, it's pretty interesting because I get calls still today, nearly two decades later, people in some of the largest tech companies in the entire world are actually using that paper. Whether they're in technical support, whether they're in architecture, it's being used everywhere. And why? Because it was so easy to understand and I took the time to really learn it before I wrote it. And when you understand something better, you can write it or speak it in a much crisper manner. In fact, I often believe that when you go to a lecture and you don't understand anything by the end of the lecture, the lecturer didn't understand it well enough to put it into terms that were understandable. I want you to write a document and make it absolutely wonderful. Make it that anyone can understand. Ideally, three versions of the document, an executive document, a management document, and an engineering document if appropriate. Now, now what I want you to do is I want you to share this document with absolutely everybody you can find because I want you to spread your knowledge and I want you to be known as an individual that spreads your knowledge. Then share your expertise. If someone gets stuck, help them. Let them know that you're there and you're available to help. So share, share, and share some more. Now the next step is to really find a way to teach it. So ask your manager if you can teach it to the engineers in your region. And I promise you they're going to say yes, because your manager wants his team to be better than the rest. The better his team is, the better he does. So he or she will love you for being willing to teach it to your team. And when your team starts to understand it, I want you to ask your manager if he or she would let you spread it to the entire operation or the entire organization or a much larger audience. And I want you to be so prepared for this. I want you to deliver such a stellar presentation that the entire company knows that you're the expert. This is really going to help you in your career and it's going to increase your scarcity more than you can possibly imagine. So the next thing that's going to happen after doing this and after teaching others, you're going to get calls from absolutely everyone and it's going to be so fast. You won't believe it. And when you get these calls, assuming you're legitimately busy and they'll typically be calls from a manager across your organization requesting your time. And what I want you to do is very simple. I want you to tell them that you would absolutely love to help them. You're extremely busy right now, but please make a request to your manager. And if your manager is willing to share you, you would love to assist them because you want to do anything you can to help the organization succeed and to help them succeed. You've done a few very important things. You've let the manager that called you know you're in demand. So it increases your value just by being scarce. 
The second thing you've done is you've made it clear to the manager that called you that you value your manager and his use of your time. So the person that called you will say, wow, this is a person of honor and expertise and integrity, and they value their manager. Boy, this is a really good person. Hmm, I really love this person on my team. Now you've also let your manager know by getting the request from the other manager how in demand you are, which increases your scarcity and raises your value. And you've shown ethics to your management team by just being respectful of their needs of your time. So what have you done? You've raised your value dramatically across the organization. People know who you are, and when you make a recommendation and people know they can trust you, they will listen to you. It'll be so easy for you to exercise influence and ethically persuade others because people will know not only do you have the capability, but you have their best interest at heart. The next recommendation I'm going to make is to leverage your differences to become a more scarce resource. And here's what I mean by that. As individuals, we all have varying backgrounds. We all have different hobbies, different passion projects, different educations, and that's a wonderful thing. And we can use that to our advantage. In fact, this can be such a strong advantage, it could actually take you from normal status to expert status, in which case you're going to be much more of a scarce resource. I'll give you a couple of examples, and then I'll give you a personal example on how it benefited me. Perhaps you're a yogi or a martial artist, and you've learned how to be calm in tense situations. Now, I want you to think about that. No matter how good an organization tries, they're going to have conflicts and they're going to have challenging situations. Now, if you actually have an area of expertise and the ability to actually de-escalate challenging situations, well, then you should be the go-to person for de-escalating challenging situations in your technology area of expertise. And people will love you for it. Or maybe you spent time in the military and you're working for a large tech company and they have different verticals. It might make sense for you to spend more of your time selling to the military than, say, selling to education. Education is a wonderful place, but it's very hard to find engineers that actually truly understand the needs of a military environment. So by specializing as a former military person of designing systems for the military, not only do you have the technical expertise, but you've got the industrial expertise and you're much more credible instantly. Or perhaps you studied psychology undergraduate, which I see a lot of people, especially working in the tech space. Maybe you even have a master's degree in that, but you're still working in tech. And maybe the knowledge that you have about psychology and understanding of anxiety could be used to actually help you sell. And what I mean by that is, now we're not talking about basically playing mind tricks with people. I want to be very clear about that before I go into depth. What we're talking about is, if you know a lot about a psychology and you understand anxiety, you can understand the anxiety and fears that a chief information officer would have if something were to happen to the network. You could use those psychology experiences along with your network engineering expertise to recommend a high security, high availability network that will work and have 99.99% .99 of the time uptime. And you can describe that in a manner that's gonna decrease the anxiety of the CIO and make him or her be able to sleep through the night and have lower fears because everything is going to work. Now, I'll give you a personal example. Now, my background is a bit odd for the tech industry, though I've worked in the tech industry for, several, for over two decades. I started by paying my way through university as a paramedic, which I loved. Then I became an ER nurse, which I didn't love, and then I became a nurse practitioner. And after I became a nurse practitioner, I just had to go to tech because tech was my love, tech was my passion. But I still had seven years of education taking care of people plus several years of being a paramedic taking care of sick people. So I know a lot about how to be good in a crisis, but I also know a lot about the healthcare industry. Now, I was a CCA and I was working as a CCIE, um, designing networks and troubleshooting networks for a great many years. And then I thought about it, how could I possibly use that nurse practitioner and medical background in addition to my network experience and expertise? And that's when I moved into a healthcare vertical. Now, it was really interesting because I moved into a healthcare vertical and I designed an architecture called the Medical Grade Network, which really was a high availability, high security network designed specifically for the needs of healthcare. And I wrote three versions of a document, presented it everywhere, and one was designed for executives, one was designed for management, one was designed for engineers. Now, being an expert on healthcare and being an expert on networking, when I would meet with a healthcare organization, I was instantly credible. Look, there were many engineers that were equally as good as me, 
but none of them could walk into a hospital and say to the chief nursing officer or the chief medical officer, I know how your organization runs, I know your organization needs, and I can build a network or design a network or help your engineers design a network that's gonna meet the workflow requirements of your healthcare team. So we can use technology as an advantage as opposed to a distraction. Just that industry knowledge that I had took my career and I saw rapid career escalation and progression in my career. Because in a way like specialization, but not necessarily, I leveraged my differences. I leveraged my background in emergency medicine and ER medicine and as a nurse practitioner to be able to consult with healthcare organizations and insurance companies and different governments across the world on how we could use technology to make their network flow better to improve the operational efficiency of their organizations. So leverage your differences. Our differences can make us great. If you're enjoying this video, please comment soft skills for technology professionals in the comment section below. Now the next way I'd like you to separate yourself as a very scarce resource and increase the value of your personal stock is to always be honorable. Now I'd like you to think about this for a second. How many truly honorable people do you know? People that will always be there for you, people that will not place their needs ahead of yours to get ahead, people that you know that will always do the right thing, someone that you can truly trust. See what I mean? It's a very scarce resource. So just by you doing the right thing and always sticking to do the right thing, people are gonna know you as someone they can always trust, which will so fast raise the value of your personal stock and it will keep your career going on, on and on over a long period of time. I truly believe that honor, integrity, ethics and expertise are the key to actually having a long-term, highly successful career. Because what will happen is, and it's not going to be necessarily instant, but over time your sphere of influence will just grow. And you're always going to be in demand, especially on the most high profile projects, because people know you're not going to mess up. And people know that if you need help, you're going to get it. And people know that if there's a problem, you're not going to blame someone else. You're going to do what's right. So people will listen to you and they will trust you and they have to because you're an expert. You're such a scarce resource that they're lucky to work with. Your value is sky high and they don't have to worry about you doing the wrong thing. So you'll automatically be placed in a manner that's going to really help your career. So I like to say, don't be a generic commodity. And what I mean by that is when we talk about the law of supply and demand, commodities for which there's a lot of, like coffee, for example, and I love coffee, aren't worth that much per pound. And compare that to say diamonds or gold or platinum, there's not a large supply, so their value is sky high. So I want you to generate real demand for your services. I want you to raise your personal stock and I want your brand to be very valuable. So please use the tips that we discussed in this video to increase the scarcity of you as a resource and increase your value. Did you know meetings can be an excellent opportunity to enhance your career? Please download our free guide to using meetings to accelerate your career. The link to this guide is in the description below. If you like this video, please like and comment below and please subscribe to my channel. Now please share this video to anyone you think would benefit to additional help with soft skills for technology professionals. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.